After witnessing a murder, a 13-year-old Rachel Ray Gardner is sent to a hospital for counseling, only to wake up in an unfamiliar building with no memory of how she got there. There, the only way out is through an elevator, where a machine-generated voiceover intercom decrees her as a sacrifice for the inhabitants of the upper floors. As Ray heads upward from her current floor of B7 to B6, she encounters an insane, bandaged man wielding a scythe and barely escapes death, managing to find another elevator that heads up to B5. On B5, she reunites with Daniel Danny Dickens, her counselor. Although it is soon clear that Danny is not trustworthy as he mainly talks about Ray's blue eyes and is crazily obsessed with them. When Ray tries to escape, Danny locks the door, as he had anticipated her distrust. As he corners her, threatening to take out her eyes, Danny tells Ray that she will be reunited with her parents in hell. This statement seems to evoke Ray's lost memories, and Danny stops to ask her to stay with him forever. However, he's cut short when the man with the scythe cuts him through the gut, and is about to kill Ray, but finds her no longer afraid to be killed. The intercom designates the man as a new sacrifice, for violating a rule by leaving his designated floor and attacking an inhabitant of another. As the man attempts to flee, Ray approaches him and asks him to kill her. Realizing that he will need Ray's intelligence to escape the building, the man introduces himself as Zack, claiming that he is an idiot and that if Ray helped him out of the building, he would kill her. The two travel up to B4, a place entirely made up of stone and modeled after a graveyard, with graves for them as well. The two split up to investigate the area. Ray explores and finds a library containing records of every sacrifice in the building, as well as a mysterious letter promising her that the writer knows her true wish. Flipping through the records, she finds Zack's real name to be Isaac Foster, an infamous serial killer that used to roam the deserted alleyways in search of victims. Meanwhile, as Zack destroys gravestones out of boredom, he accidentally activates a switch, allowing Ray to proceed further into the building. Ray soon returns, and she reveals that she has learned about his past. However, instead of being afraid, like Zack had expected, Ray simply reminds Zack of her wish to be killed. As they continue on their way, they're confronted by a boy wearing a pumpkin mask. The boy, Edward Eddie Mason, reveals himself to be the inhabitant of B4 and wants to kill and bury Ray after having fallen in love with her at first sight. After a brief skirmish, Eddie flees and finds Ray, offering to grant her wish for death. However, Ray hesitates when she realizes that Zack won't be able to escape if she dies. Following her through the opening, Zack manages to track down the two and swears to God on their promise, immediately convincing Ray to side with him. Furious at her rejection, Eddie switches off the lights and attempts to use the darkness of his floor to his advantage to kill. But Ray thwarts his plans and steals his remote control. With the lights back on, Zack easily kills Eddie and buries him in the grave originally meant for Ray. The two proceed on the elevator up to floor B3, where they enter a prison-like environment. Ray and Zack discover that B3 is controlled by Catherine Kathy Ward, a sadistic prison warden who forces the pair through various obstacles and booby traps as a punishment for their crimes. In the first room they enter, Zack accidentally traps himself in an electric chair, and is repeatedly shocked with Kathy giving Ray a hint on how to rescue him. Ray figures out that the dummies in the next room are controlling the chair. Upon destroying the dummies, Zack is freed and the door to the next room is unlocked. They enter and are trapped in a gas chamber slowly filling up with poison gas. Kathy explains that they must solve a puzzle to escape, and they have one gas mask to share, but they have a limited amount of time before she releases an even deadlier poison gas that renders the mask useless. Ray seemingly solves the first stage of the puzzle by balancing a scale, but she begins to succumb to the gas as the time limit runs out. Ray notices that an air vent has opened and Zack boosts her up to reach it, allowing her to recover a keycard. However, in his haste to open the door, Zack breaks the card just as time runs out and the second gas begins to be pumped into the room. Ray deduces the flammable properties of the gas, creating a spark that triggers an explosion that destroys the door. Despite their escape, the two are weakened by the gas and decide to rest, where Zack recalls a dream from his childhood when he lived under abusive caretakers. When they proceed to the next room, he's forced to relive his childhood through a dollhouse puzzle mimicking his past, further agitating him. The obstacle the next room holds finally cracks Zack, involving two syringes, one being harmless and the other containing a dangerous hallucinatory drug. As he injects both into himself to spare Ray, Zack's past returns to haunt him, causing him to become more aggressive and threaten to kill Ray. A reminder of the oath finally forces Zack to calm himself down and reaffirms it. 
In a flashback, it is revealed that Zack murdered his abusive caretakers after being inspired by a horror slasher movie. In the present, Zack begins succumbing to the drug again, and Ray is chased into the final room of the floor where Kathy herself is. In exhilaration, Kathy gives Ray a gun and suggests she kill Zack with it. Barely managing to get a hold of himself, Zack encourages Ray, but she refuses, telling him that it's their choice to kill or be killed. Impressed by her words, Zack stabs himself to uphold their oath angering Kathy, who exits her safe room to inspect his body. Upon finding that he is still alive, she gleefully promises to torture him to death and threatens Ray with a machine-controlled gun instead on the ceiling, revealing that the gun she had given her was unloaded the whole time. Instead, Ray calmly takes out another fully loaded gun, hid it in her bag, and shoots Kathy in the stomach. This momentary distraction weakens her and lets Zack regain sufficient consciousness to deal the finishing blow. Ray and Zack proceed to the elevator, where Ray reveals she was in counseling after witnessing a murder when Zack collapses from his wounds. The two proceed to the elevator, but Zack collapses from his wounds and is slowly bleeding to death. This forces Ray to keep moving ahead alone in hopes of finding anything that can heal him, meeting a priest named Abraham Gray on his floor, modeled after a church complex. Gray and Ray make a deal whereby he will lead her back down to B5, Danny's floor, which stores the necessary medical gear and in the process be allowed to let her go through a test to judge her character. Just before doing so, she promises Zack she will retrieve a knife from his floor as well. Following Ray down to Kathy's floor again, Ray is instructed to restore power to the elevator in order to proceed further, and while beside him, smells a strange bewitchingly sweet gas emanating from him. Journeying through the jail cells again, she is attacked by Kathy's zombie-like prisoners, now set free in her absence. Ray flees to the control room, activating Kathy's fire armament and booby traps to eliminate them. Ray is shocked to find Kathy's body missing, and is taunted by a hallucination of Kathy praising her as an exemplary sinner for her cold-heartedness. They continue down to Eddie's floor, where Ray ruthlessly crushes screaming stuffed hands emerging from the unturned graves to activate the elevator, referring them as simply doll hands. Like Kathy, Eddie's grave is upturned and his body is missing, and Ray is once again taunted by a hallucination of Eddie who questions her lack of compassion. Gray expresses discomfort at Ray's actions, all the while observing her on each floor. Finally, they reach Danny's floor, only for Ray to discover in a panic that all the medicine and Danny's body are missing. With no other choice, she follows Gray back to Zack's floor. Meanwhile, back on B2, Zack has a continued dream of his childhood, where he murdered another passing woman after his caretakers. Taken in by a kind old blind man, Zack tries to state his urge to kill by murdering a random man in the hopes that the blind man will fear him. However, the man merely leaves to buy more food, and Zack soon discovers that the blind man was murdered by a pair of gleeful muggers. Realizing that destroying people's happiness was satisfying for him, Zack kills the pair and declares that he's a monster. Danny then approaches the unconscious Zack and wonders if he should kill him. Danny tells the now awake Zack how he survived by using body armor and fake blood, offering medicine to Zack in return for him gouging out Ray's eyes. Zack refuses and Danny takes his leave. Meanwhile, Ray finds Zack's knife in a makeshift bedroom, and upon observing the room, realizes that she still knows nothing about him. Journeying back up to Gray's floor, the priest questions Ray's motives, and concludes that she is a selfish witch who causes misfortune to those around her, additionally demeaning Ray's firm belief in her god. Distressed, she flees and reunites with Zack, deciding to follow Danny's trail of blood to get medicine. On the way, Zack is forced to fight off a giant snake, sapping his strength even further. Gathering her courage, Ray decides to chase after Danny alone, and Zack gives her his knife for protection. Ray runs into Gray, who reveals that he has confiscated the medicine Danny was carrying. The scene shifts to a courtroom, with Ray presenting as the judge over a witch trial to determine her identity, with the hallucinations of Danny, Eddie, and Kathy to testify against her. Kathy points out that Ray is hiding a lying heart under her calm facade. Eddie laments that Gray is selfish, and Danny boasts of her corrupted soul that is beyond saving. With all the testimonies against her, Gray declares Ray a witch, and sentences her to be burned at the stake. As Ray is about to burn in the fire, she reflects on her relationship with Zack, and finally comes to the conclusion that he is her god, the one who had always helped and saved her when she needed it most. Cutting herself with his knife, Ray successfully returns to the present, deducing that Gray has been using drugs to create illusions on his floor. 
With death threats, Gray surrenders and gifts her the medicine, which Ray uses to stop the bleeding, disinfect the wound, and stitch it up, declaring her realization to him. As they proceed to the final floor, B1, Zack reveals that his mother's lover set him on fire, resulting in him sustaining burns all over his body that had to be covered up with bandages, and his mother selling him off to an illegal orphanage that trafficked children. Ray attempts to tell him a secret of hers as well, but she can't bring herself to in fear that he will hate her for lying to him all this time. The elevator finally stops at B1, a dimly lit house with gray furnishings. Zack heads deeper into the floor, opening a room at the end of the corridor filled with fake flowers and the corpse of a couple unnaturally stitched together with thread. Ray begins to go hysterical, begging him to kill her before fainting. Danny then arrives suddenly and locks Zack out of the room, offering to unlock it only if he can fully explore the floor and find out about Ray's past. Zack reluctantly begins exploring the floor, managing to fight his way through various death traps only to fall into a hole filled with sharp spikes. Saved by Gray, the priest explains that he controls the entire building as an experimental facility to study and observe those who claim to believe in God with those placed in B7 as sacrifices that are to be judged by the angels on each floor. Deciding to take some interest in their relationship, he provides Zack with a clue on how to proceed, allowing him to enter Ray's room. A recorded news report details the murders of Mr. and Mrs. Gardner, a couple in wedlock whose bodies had been mutilated badly with bullet and knife wounds and were stitched together. Meanwhile, their daughter Ray was found completely unharmed even though a week had passed after their deaths, implying that she murdered her parents. Zack continues watching a recording of an interview between Danny and Ray, where Ray reveals her parents were abusive and hated her and each other. One night, her father finally snapped and stabbed her mother to death, prompting her to take her mother's gun and shoot her father to death. Afterward, she also stitched their bodies together in order to create the perfect family, and lived happily with them until the police arrived. Noticing her blank blue eyes, Danny reveals to Ray that his mother committed suicide due to him having been born missing an eye, and he becomes obsessed with Ray since her eyes resemble his mother's. Angry and disgusted, Zack storms back to where Ray and Danny are and proclaims his suspicions that Ray is in fact the angel of B1, which Danny confirms and reveals that Ray was sent to B7 after finding finding newfound faith in God by reading a Bible. Knowing that she had lied to him, Zack angrily declares that he has not raised God. Disillusioned, Ray brought out her reloaded gun and shot Zack but missed. Ray flees, luring Zack through more traps until he manages to corner her in the last room. He once again asks her if she intended to kill him when Danny arrives and holds him at gunpoint. Cornered by the two of them, Ray then calmly draws her gun and fires. Ray shoots Danny, much to his surprise, claiming that Zack is hers to kill, and so up. However, she remains conflicted since she has lost her faith in God, meaning there is nobody left to forgive her for her crimes, and hesitates in shooting Zack. Pushing her down, Zack reminds Ray that he is the one who made the promise to kill her, not her god, shaking Ray back to her senses. The two swear to each other again on their vow and attempt to continue their way out. Although B1 is Ray's floor, she is unaware of its location even after knowing every nook and cranny of the place, deducing that the exit must be on B2 due to her floor being the last to be built and the strange observation that no one ever came down from above. While on the way to reactivate the elevator, she encounters Grey, with questions her intentions and her identity, telling him that she has accepted herself and will hence take responsibility for her own actions and choices from now on. Satisfied with her answer, Grey gives her a hint that the exit is behind a huge glass-stained window on his floor. When Zack and Ray reunite, they try to find her gun as well, but realize Danny's body is missing once again and that Ray's gun has been destroyed. Together, they warily return to B2, where Zack smashes through the stained glass window to reveal a long flight of stairs leading to the surface. Just then, the building's self-destruct sequence is initiated. Ray and Zack flee up the stairs as the facility begins to burn and collapse, but their way is blocked by steel bars. Zack briefly has a panic attack due to his fear of fire, but he manages to regain his senses upon seeing Ray struggling to break the bars. Overcoming his fear, Zack manages to break through the bars and all the other obstacles, though he breaks his scythe in the process. They finally reach the top floor where Ray asks Zack if he truly wants to kill her, and she doesn't fault him if he changes his mind. Zack reaffirms the promise he made when Danny arrives and shoots Ray in the back. He reveals he was the one who activated the self-destruct sequence and holds Zack at gunpoint to watch Ray die, so he'll have to live with the knowledge he couldn't fulfill his promise. Ray assures Zack that she doesn't care if their vow is fulfilled or not, only that the vow was made in the first place. 
and she will carry the burden of their vows so that Zack doesn't need to think of himself as a liar. Jealous of Ray's affection for Zack, Danny shoots Ray again and prepares to kill Zack when Gray disables him with a crossbow. Gray orders Zack to leave through the exit, assuring him that there's still a chance to save Ray. Zack picks up Ray's body and heads to the door, with Danny still pointing his gun at his back. Gray shoots Danny again to prevent him from shooting Zack. As Zack carries Ray through the exit, Gray has a final conversation with Danny, revealing that he became fascinated with how Ray and Zack managed to change each other, and how he's come to realize that everybody is a human, both flawed and beautiful. The building then collapses, presumably killing both Danny and Gray. Zack is able to reach the surface just as the police arrive to investigate the building collapse, surrendering to the police so Ray can be taken to a hospital. After recovering from her wounds, Ray is taken to a mental care facility where the staff attempt to rehabilitate her with limited success. Ray is informed that Zack has been sentenced to death for his murder spree as well as killing Ray's parents and kidnapping her. However, shortly after hearing the news, Zack breaks into Ray's room to fulfill their oath, having escaped prison. As they both leap out of the window to escape, Ray once again pleads for Zack to kill her, which Zack reaffirms by telling her to stop crying and smile. By the time the police arrive, the room is already empty, with a splatter of blood on the windowsill and Zack's knife on the floor. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.